An epoxide is a three-membered ring containing one oxygen atom. An epoxide forming reaction can be called epoxidation. As we'll see in this video, epoxides can be formed from alkenes. There are two common approaches to epoxidation. One uses a halohydrin as the reactant. Recall that a halohydrin can be prepared from an alkene. It may be useful to see the video on halohydrin formation to refresh your memory on this. The reaction treats an alkene with a halogen, namely chlorine or bromine, in water, which is a nucleophilic solvent. This results in the addition of both a halogen and a hydroxyl group across the alkene, hence the name halohydrin. An epoxide can be formed from a halohydrin simply by treating it with base. Deprotonation of the hydroxyl group affords an alkoxide. That alkoxide is nucleophilic and the adjacent carbon bears a leaving group. As a result, an intramolecular SN2 attack can occur in which the alkoxide attacks the adjacent carbon, displacing a halide, and thereby forming the three-membered ring of the epoxide. A second approach to epoxide formation uses an alkene as the reactant and a peroxy acid as the reagent. Peroxy acids exhibit intramolecular hydrogen bonding between their carbonyl oxygen and the acidic proton. This weakens the oxygen-hydrogen bond. If that intramolecular hydrogen bonding strengthens to the point where the carbonyl oxygen actually removes the proton, this then frees up the electrons in the oxygen-hydrogen bond to attack one alkene carbon. The alkene pi electrons simultaneously attack oxygen, cleaving the weak oxygen-oxygen bond and pushing the purple electrons towards the carbonyl carbon to reform a new carbonyl. This results in the addition of a single oxygen atom across the two alkene carbons, hence giving us the epoxide. And a carboxylic acid is formed as a byproduct of the reaction. Since the donation of the oxygen to the alkene is a concerted process, in other words, all the bond making and breaking happens at the same time, this therefore must be a syn addition. In other words, the oxygen is added from a single side of the alkene. A commonly used peroxy acid reagent is known as MCPBA, which stands for metachloroperoxy benzoic acid. In this example, a symmetrical alkene is used as the reactant. It is first treated with bromine in water to form a halohydrin. If you'd like to review the mechanism of that step, be sure to refer to the video on halohydrin formation. The halohydrin is then treated with a base. In this instance, sodium hydride has been selected. However, many other bases would suffice. Sodium hydride deprotonates the alcohol and therefore affords an alkoxide. The alkoxide is nucleophilic and the adjacent center is electrophilic because it bears a good leaving group and consequently intramolecular SN2 reaction takes place. The alkoxide attacks the adjacent carbon and displaces bromide forming the three-membered epoxide ring. Notice that the attack of oxygen occurs opposite the leaving group, exactly as we would expect for an SN2 reaction. 
It's also worth noting that no stereocenters have been formed in this particular reaction. So we need not necessarily use wedges and dashes when drawing the product. In other words, this representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible that zero, one, or even two stereocenters may be formed during the reaction. Let's consider an example in which a single stereocenter is formed during the course of the reaction. In this instance, an alkene reactant is first treated with chlorine in water to form a halohydrin. Notice that only one center within the halohydrin is actually a stereocenter, and so only that center has been drawn with wedges and dashes. Two enantiomeric halohydrins are formed during that first step of the reaction. In the next step of the reaction, the halohydrin is deprotonated using a base such as sodium hydride. This results in the formation of an alkoxide. And the alkoxide will engage in an intramolecular SN2 reaction in which it attacks the center bearing chlorine from the side opposite the leaving group. And so if the chlorine resided on a wedge, then the oxygen will attack from underneath and the new carbon-oxygen bond will be a dash. The reverse happens in the case of the enantiomeric alkoxide. This results in the formation of two epoxide products which are enantiomers of one another. Now let's turn our attention to an example in which two stereocenters are formed during the epoxidation. In this instance, an alkene substrate is treated with a peroxy acid. As intramolecular hydrogen bonding takes place within the peroxy acid, that hydrogen bond will eventually strengthen to the point where the carbonyl pi electrons are used to form a formal covalent bond to that hydrogen. This frees the green electrons to attack one of the two alkene carbons. Simultaneously, the alkene pi bond attacks that very same oxygen. This cleaves the weak oxygen-oxygen bond, and the purple electrons are pushed towards the carbonyl carbon to form a new carbonyl pi bond. In this concerted epoxidation, the addition is syn. In other words, the oxygen can be added from above or from below the plane of the alkene. Remember that a carboxylic acid is formed as a byproduct of the reaction. Although the product contains two stereocenters, only two of four possible stereoisomers are formed. These are the synenantiomers. It's also worth noting that had the alkene been converted to the epoxide via a halohydrin, the stereochemical outcome would have been the same. It is always important to be on the lookout for internal symmetry, but it is especially important to do so in reactions where the same group is added to each carbon of a pi bond. Let's consider this very similar epoxidation reaction. As a single oxygen of the peroxy acid is added across the alkene pi bond, it is added in a syn fashion, meaning that that oxygen can be added from above or below the plane of the alkene. However, in this instance, those two compounds are actually the same substance. Notice that the epoxide product has an internal plane of symmetry. This makes it a meso compound, which has no enantiomer. So although two stereocenters are formed 
during this reaction, only a single epoxide product results. In summary, epoxidation can be performed by converting an alkene to a halohydrin, followed by treatment of the halohydrin with base. Or, alternatively, the alkene may be treated directly with a peroxy acid to yield an epoxide. The stereochemical outcome is the same for both approaches, and that is a net syn addition of the epoxide oxygen across the pi bond. There is no carbocation intermediate in either instance, and so no rearrangement is possible. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.